Hi there and welcome back to my channel and today I'm going to be working on my first subscriber request. I can't remember who it was, I'm ever so sorry, but I know that somebody requested Harry Potter some time ago now and it stuck in my brain and I thought with the you know theme of going back to school and the beginning of autumn it was a fitting model to work with this week. As a bit of a disclaimer, I know practically nothing about Harry Potter. I've not seen any of the films and I've not read any of the books and I suspect I'm the only person in the world <laughs> that hasn't. I tell a lie, my partner hasn't either. So I don't know why. I, I've just never been particularly drawn to it. Uh, perhaps I'm missing out though, so uh, tell me if I am. So as always, I'm going to start with the face of the model. I'm loosely working with the Daniel Radcliffe interpretation of Harry Potter, but I don't want to go kind of too strict on that, really to try and make things a little easier on myself, because I'm not really used to making such young people with polymer clay, so I'm sure all the proportions are very different facially. So. Yeah, I'm just going to go with my, my own interpretation, loosely based on Daniel. So now the face is done, I'm going to move on to the base and I think I'll give him a white base. I'm not going to be giving any facts today on Harry Potter as I sometimes do with my process videos because if you're watching this video, you're probably a Harry Potter fan and there's nothing new that I can tell you. But what I am interested in is uh, the story of its creator, JK Rowling, as Harry Potter was a real labour of love for her for, you know, a number of years really. And its origins are really interesting in how she came about creating it because I, I think she was living in Portugal with uh, her ex-husband who, you know, didn't sound like the nicest guy in the world. So she left uh, him with her daughter and went to live in Edinburgh, where she lived the life of a single mum in her Edinburgh flats. And she'd regularly go to the cafe owned by her brother-in-law, I believe, where she'd sit and write Harry Potter because it was a lot warmer, really, than her home. So she'd find herself there sort of most days working away and I find that really inspiring. The life of a creative artist of any description or any background can be really difficult in terms of trying to keep going and I think she received her fair share of rejection letters etc which I think every artist goes through to be honest. It's never nice but it's part of the process. But she stuck with it, obviously, and she got published, I believe, in 1997, and she became a billionaire within sort of 10 years, really, which is incredible. And yeah, she's gone on to be just, well, a huge name, hasn't she? So that's really inspiring, and particularly for female artists out there. I meant to say, actually, I'm not on camera today because I've still got some issues with my eyes, so I'm trying to reduce the amount of time I spend on the computer, really, or looking at screens, so hopefully I'll be back soon. I have booked into the opticians now, but I can't get in until September, so hopefully they'll be able to suggest a solution. Basically, if you've not watched any of my previous videos or most recent videos, I've got some digital eye strain going on at the moment, which is pretty significant, um, along with a, a few other health issues, so yeah, I'm not feeling my best at the moment, but fingers crossed I'll get things sorted soon. So Daniel Radcliffe is obviously a big name as a result of the Harry Potter series of films, and I find it really interesting that he's often mistaken for Elijah Wood, because I really can't see why. <laughs> Other than the fact they both play, you know, huge names really in Harry Potter and Frodo Baggins from Lord of the Rings, I guess at a similar time.
So now I'm moving on to little Harry Potter's tie and I've noticed that there's various iterations of his tie design and I'm assuming that's because he goes to you know primary school and then secondary school but I you know I might be completely wrong on that so let me know if I am but I'm going with a younger version of Harry Potter so the younger images of him or the younger images of Daniel Radcliffe playing him have this design here so yeah that's what I'm going with for my model and now I can move on to his uh, robe or his cape so I've just got some black Fimo here and I use Fimo Professional Clay if you're interested in what I use. Incidentally I do have a list of the tools that I use pretty regularly down below in description so by all means go and take a look at those. They are affiliate links so I do get basically a tiny commission if you choose to purchase anything but that's entirely up to you. And if you've not come across my channel before and this is the first video that you're watching, I'm Lizzie and I'm a polymer clay artist and illustrator and I make weekly videos about my polymer clay sculptures such as little Harry Potter here and I occasionally make tutorials and the odd kind of creative studio vlog as well so if you like what you see by all means go and hit that subscribe button and remember to hit that bell for notifications as well and I also should mention that I suffer a lot with traffic noise on this channel my studio is on quite a busy road so you'll invariably hear a uh, different kind of traffic noise often trucks and uh, and the occasional tractor but I do my best to edit those out where possible. So I've decided to give my little Harry sculpture a prop in the form of a spell book or I'm assuming it's a spell book anyway. So I'm making a, a red cover here so I was going to give him a wand as well but I actually I think that would be too cluttered and also, you know, I need to ensure that uh, my model's going to bake well. So yeah, it's just a spell book. And I did tinker with it a little more uh, by the time that I put it on the model. Basically, it was a bit too thick, really. And I wanted to ensure that it would just bake well on the, on the model. So I'm adding just a little bit of detail here on the front of the book with some bronze Fimo FX clay, I think it is. So I'm going to add the arms to little Harry Potter here. And it's really looking like a school uniform now, isn't it? So I decided against adding any wire to the book because I didn't want it popping through by accident really because that would be you know a bit of a nightmare to try and resolve if it if it pops through so I'm doing my best here just to try and attach it to the model with his hands and I think they should act as a, a good enough support really so to finish off I'm going to add his hoods and I'm keeping it as simple as I can really because I found in the past that the more details a hood is the kind of messier they look really so it's just best to give an impression of a hood really and I'll finish off with this little badge which is a very simplified version of the design because I use coloured polymer clay so now I'm going to move on to creating his glasses and I've got some black craft wire here so it's just a case of wrapping it around the brush that I have here which is the largest implements I could find really to, to wrap them around but I think they're of an okay size actually I don't think they need to be too big against his eyes so now I've done that I can move on to his hair 
and I've just got some basic brown clay that's I mixed myself. And this is always a, a time consuming process but I have to say this was pretty time consuming because I just found it was uh, yeah just quite difficult to do. I, I think you know working with uh, with young people is uh, very different to creating adults so it was a bit of a learning process for me. So here was the first attempt but I went on again behind the camera to to rework the hair so this was my second version. And yeah, I'm pretty happy with the model. It's not my best ever model, I have to say, but nevertheless, I think you can really tell that it's Harry Potter. So I may well go on to create a little fan art poster at some point, we'll see. But if you do have any suggestions of who you'd like to see me make at any points, by all means, let me know below. But I think between now and the end of October, I'll be working on a lot more Halloween themed models. So stay tuned for those. Take care and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.